Hello, Knockouts. Tanya TKO here. And I am a self-love specialist from TanyaTKO.com. I hope you learn how to love yourselves and one another. On this channel, we use viral video topics as teachable moments for what self-loving or self-abusing looks like in relationships. And recently, we've been talking about this tremendous brouhaha, which has kicked up all of this dust around the internet with Derek, 12 years of cheat Jackson, and how he got blasted out by mistresses after mistresses, a, 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 a procession of mistresses coming forward, saying that they've had this woman's husband and all this other stuff, et cetera, et cetera. And in a response to that, in response to the exposure and all of that other stuff, um, his wife has said that she knows what she's doing. She feels good with what it is that she's doing. She's sticking by her man and he has accepted God. You all have seen the videos where it shows that he's in, they're in some sort of cult, right? And there have been just a lot of different parodies and discussions that have come up. I even heard that it was on MSNBC this morning. Derek was voted jackass of the day or the donkey, donkey of the day on the morning club. Um, TMZ covered it. E, I believe it's um, E, E covered it. I believe that's who, who covered it, E Canada. And so this is, the story has gone worldwide. And there have been a lot of, a lot of discussions coming forward about this whole, this whole boondoggle, this whole situation. And I decided to bring out my board as you see, I brought the board out. And the, the title of today's video is Three Ways That Christianity Keeps You Stuck. There wasn't enough room on the first line to write Christianity. And I also heard you're not supposed to write certain words that get thrown away and all this other stuff, blah, blah, blah. I just put an X. So Christianity. Christianity keeps you stuck. And now this video is not scripted. This video is not politically correct. This video may be triggering for some people, but the, this video, I'm going to give you the observations that I have experienced in my life that have, that have, that shifted when I shifted out of Christianity and became more spiritual. And so I'm going to jump to the board. So welcome in everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Listen, I don't know who you feel, and let me just address this right now because I made a video earlier and there are some people who, I, I made a video earlier and it was broadcast to my wrong YouTube page. I meant to broadcast it on this one. And it was basically saying, if you resonate with the page, stay. If you don't leave, it's it's pretty much that simple. If, if you feel that, talking or wearing a battle bonnet, talking about a battle, battle bonnet or wearing a battle bonnet and camouflage, if you feel that that is humiliating or degrading to another person, we're not on the same wavelength and this may not be the, the right place for you. So I would, I would rather you just go ahead and leave. I'm letting you know right now, I am unapologetic. I am unbothered and I, I just, I, I don't know. I, I would rather you just go. I don't really know what else to say about it. There's, I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. So if there's anybody who has an issue and we, we did this earlier, if there's anybody on here who would like to get blocked, just put up the number seven. I will come through and block you because I understand I'm a very beautiful woman. I'm engaging, charismatic and magnetic. And sometimes people can't turn away from me. So if you can't, if you can't get away by all means, let me know and I will help get you away. Right. Okay, so let's 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 jump into the board, right? Let's jump into the board. All right. All right. So, here we go. Three ways Christianity keeps you stuck. So, I'm going I decided to draw a triangle here. Let me make just make sure that where you can see everything, right? All right. Here's a triangle with the three ways, right? And we'll start at number three. So the number three way that keeps you stuck is heaven. 
Oh, can you see that? Let me help you zoom in a little bit. Let's see. No, that's not it. This way. Okay. Okay, can we see? Okay, perfect, perfect. So the number one way, I mean, sorry, the number, number three, heaven, the idea of heaven and not living for what exists today, not making our lives, let me turn this up so you can see the light better. There we go. Oh, that's pretty. I like this lighting. Yes, thank you. All right. So number three, heaven, the idea of this place where if you endure enough on earth, if you do enough of these things on earth, if you wait until after you're dead, then you can live in this existence or be in this existence where everything is just peachy and just wonderful. You have the milk, the honey, the golden streets, the harps, and animals are vegetarians and they have gums instead of teeth or, or however it is that it's depicted, right? So this idea of this nirvana, that if you endure enough, ignore enough, go through enough on this earth. So heaven is number one. So if you go through the pain, if you go through the torture, if you just be good enough, then one day you will get into another existence where everything is going to be just wonderful. Instead of being present in the now, making your life what you want it to be right now, realizing, listen, tomorrow may not be promised. Whatever it is that exists in another realm may not be what it is that people are describing it as, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to live a wonderful, wonderful life where I honor myself right now, where I take care of myself and the things that make me happy in this life right now. So the idea of this heaven, I once saw this movie and you all can tell me the name of this movie because I saw it at a film festival and I was horrified when I saw this movie. So in this movie, it had Mackay Pfeiffer in the movie. And this was a movie based in the South and he was accused of some, some crime he didn't commit and he was in jail, right? So he was accused of this crime. He was in jail. And his grandmother went around from, from place to place trying to get her grandson out. And they were like, well, you know, we really does love you, Miss Mabel, but your grandson, somebody got to go down for this crime and it just happens to be him, right? And she was like, now, you know, I have done breastfed three generations of your children, your children. And I knew you from when you was a young little whippersnapper. And my grandson, you know, he ain't guilty. And shame on you. Shame on you, Sheriff. And then she went back to the jail. Tell me what was the name of this movie. Tell me what was the name of this movie. She went back to the jail and she was like, well, listen, hell, sonny. Oh, you going to die. You going to die. He was going to die. But heaven, oh, when you get to heaven, you, know, you can be in the, the, the silver arches, oh, with the harps and the, the trumpets of the law. And I was like, no, you need to fight harder. I was like, get, get him out of there. I'm like, what are you doing? I'm like, don't give up. I'm like, no, this just is not good enough. But she was thinking about heaven. His life here on this earth didn't matter. And she was just like, she just basically gave up. What was the name of that movie? <laughs> Stephanie is saying, I read the book. I can't remember the movie. Cartier is saying Green Mile. It wasn't the Green Mile. This was a grandmother and Mackay Pfeiffer in it. Tell me the name of this movie, right? So then I was like, okay, well, this is not healthy. This is actually dysfunctional because we give up the opportunity that we have in this incarnation to really live our life to the fullest, right? And this idea of doing right only so that you can get to this place instead of doing right for right's sake and figuring out what that means in your life I feel that that is dysfunctional. I feel that that is one of the ways that keeps us stuck. Let's go to number two. So num the number two way that keeps us stuck is hell. Hell, H-E-L-L, -L, right? 
and the devil. Hell slash devil, right? And so the, the idea of this place, this fiery inferno, that you don't want to go into this torturous place so that you do right, not because you want to do right. You do right because you don't want to go into this fiery place that for the rest of your life. And also, look, worshiping some entity that would roast you and torture you for all eternity because of the free will that you were given and you didn't, weren't really given free will, but that's a talk for another day, right? What happens when we have this depiction of hell and devil, and I want you all to look up Dante's Inferno because Dante's Inferno was a comedy that was written, this huge book, and it wasn't before Dante's Inferno that there was ever a depiction of what hell actually was or looked like, and they talked about the seven levels of hell and all of the different things that existed, and people were frightened, and they were like, oh, well, I don't want to go to hell, et cetera, et cetera, right? But this idea of the devil, one of the ways that this keeps you stuck is because people can use this entity and people do use this entity of the devil, oh, this temptation, oh, the, these things tempted us and the devil got in the air and, and the devil made me do it and the devil made him do it. And so we got all of these things with the temptation and we got... And we got, um, uh, I, I, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. The devil did it. It wasn't my choice. The devil got to talking and I, I got the temptation. And then the next thing you know, I didn't do it. The devil made me. And that's one of the things that keeps you stuck. What would happen if a person said, you know what? This was my choice. What would happen if you weren't able to use this this entity as a scapegoat. What would happen if you weren't able to just be like, oh, well, this is this other entity that had nothing to do with me, right? What would happen? What would your life look like if you could really take accountability for the choices that you chose to make in this lifetime, right? The number one thing, and some of you are going to be surprised by this, but the number one thing that I feel in Christianity that keeps you stuck is this idea of God. The way that we think about God in Christianity, where anything good that happens, anything wonderful that exists in your life, it happened because somebody outside of you made it happen. So that you don't get to take ownership. You don't get to take ownership for the good things, right? You don't get to take ownership of the choices that you made that led to things and decisions that you made that brought wonderful things into your life. But instead, you give that glory, quote unquote glory, to another entity, to another being. And when we have these ideas that another being is responsible for the good that we do, it opens up the door to have a scapegoat of someone or something that takes responsibility for the bad. What if you said, you know what? I make my life how I want my life to be. And the choices that I made, the things that I brought forward, the universe, the higher self, me as a reflection of God, me as God energy, right? And then I'm gonna give you all one more bonus that I wanted to add to this list, right? The idea of this agape, Let me ask you all, do you know what agape love is? Agape love. This is an idea. This is something that I feel keeps us stuck. I, don't, I think I didn't pull the thing back out, but yeah. Let's talk about agape love and how this keeps us stuck in our own lives, right? What is it that you know agape to be? I'm looking for some answers in the comments. What is it that you know that you know, okay, this is the first one that I saw when I came back. I'm, maybe someone may have said it before, but this is the first one that I saw when I came back. Unconditional love. That's that agape love, right? Agape is that unconditional love. Absolutely, right? What is it that's dangerous and can keep you stuck in your life with being a human being who's, 
whose desire to be in relationship with others has an unconditional love that shows up. I want you all to tell me what is what what is dangerous about that? Being a human hoping to 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 exhibit unconditional love in a relationship and how that can keep you stuck. I want to see some of the answers here. I want to see some of the answers. Oh, let me try to get my Okay. Well, it go okay. It's going by so so quickly. Okay. Oh, I'm trying to grab it with my mouse, but they're going by so quickly. All right. Exactly. Yes. There's so many people who are answering that. And I'm going to read the cash apps in just a moment. I'm going to read the cash apps in just a moment. So, and for those of you who want to know what the cash app address is, it's in the description of the video. I get contacted by many Christian women who are writing to me about the abuse that they're enduring in relationships, wanting to give their husbands Christ love, wanting to give a human being love which has no conditions. How do we ask a human being to have love with no conditions? That means there's no condition on it, no matter what you do, I will still love you. And, and listen, if you are going to have this esoteric agape style love for a person and still be able to separate them from your life, that's cool. You say, I love you as God loved you, but I still am going to keep you away from me, right? That's one thing. But what I see people doing is I see people using this idea of agape love to stay in abusive relationships, to endure abuse. There was this one woman, her husband got a person impregnated outside of the relationship. She was pregnant herself. He brought a dis-ease to her. And she said, listen, I'm trying to be a good Christian woman. I said, listen, get out of there. What, what are you doing? I'm like, because the, the disease that he brought home, she was able to cure from. But I'm like, you're carrying a child and he brought a disease home to you. I'm like, thank goodness you can cure from this disease. But what if it was something that you couldn't get rid of? So she's sitting there as a human saying, listen, I will love you without conditions. You don't have to respect me. I, you don't, I don't have to have boundaries that you respect. You don't have to treat me well. You can hurt me. You can harm me. And I will still be here for you. How does that benefit you? In what, and this is, I think this is a skewed teaching because are you not a human being? Do you not deserve to be taken care of? Do you not deserve to take care of yourself? This is why there's a lot of people who are angry with me right now, right? There are people who are angry with me. And the people who are angry with me are people who are expecting for the world to be comfortable enough for them to feel comfortable in the world. Rather than them loving themselves enough to go where it is that they feel comfortable. Like we're waiting for the world to become soft enough or placid enough for us to be okay in the world. And I'm telling you, love yourself enough to set boundaries, have those boundaries respected. And that same love that you have for other people, start with yourself. Start with loving yourself first. When we talk about agape love and we talk about forgiveness, right? Think. Has there ever been any person or any time that Jesus has not forgiven a person who was asked? Like eventually, it doesn't matter what, what the person did. If the person asked, they can be forgiven, right? And I feel like these ideas were taught to people in this religion to keep people stuck. So that you yourself, because the people who taught this religion to you were not people themselves who were living by this religion. These were people who were harming you, who were hurting you, and you were just supposed to sit there and be like, forgive them, Father, for they know not what. So that even as you are having your life taken, you don't fight for your life. Because remember, because Jesus had the thorns on his head and he had that big wooden thing on his back. I remember because I was in, I was in Latin America in 2015 when they reenacted this, this, I, I don't know if it's called the passion of the Christ, but it, it happened during this Santa 
Semana Santa, I think that's what it was called, Semana Santa, or Sem Santa de Semana. It, and it was in the hot sun that this man had a big wooden thing carrying it through the streets. And there were people dressed up as Romans behind him. And I said, well, what is this here? And I was like, my goodness. And so Jesus didn't fight for his life. Jesus didn't say, respect my body. Jesus didn't say, you know, um, there are other people who are depending on me and who need me. So stop, stop doing this. Stop trying to harm me. Stop trying to kill me. No, nope. Jesus just walked with a thing, getting whipped with the thorns on his head, bleeding, carrying the wooden thing. And people think of that as the ideal. They're like, okay, well, I'm going to do what it is that I'm going to suffer. I'm going to carry this, this veritable, because for many of us, it's not a wooden cross. It's something else. You know, it's the burdens of a job that we don't like, the burdens of a relationship we don't want to be in, the burdens of a household that we don't resonate in anymore. And we continue and we're just like, oh, I'm just going to wait for heaven or, oh, forgive them. They don't know. No, love yourself. Love yourself enough to say that while I am alive here in this earth, in this life, I'm going to do what it is that I need to do to protect myself, to protect my peace, to love myself. And that's not selfish. That's self-love. That's self-full. That is honoring the human that, that, that the Most High created. That's what that is. That is honoring the human that, 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 that was created in you the reflection of the light of the Lord inside of you. But so many of us use religion as a way to continue to endure. And for so many of us, it has been ingrained and embedded in us because we saw our foremothers and we saw our forefathers suffering. You all remember in that movie that Nate um, with Nat Turner, I believe his name was, and they had him going from plantation to plantation, proselytizing and teaching the word of the Bible, but not teaching the parts which said, stood up for yourself, but teaching the parts that said, honor your master and your days will be long on this earth and all this other stuff here. Let me run to the cash apps real quick. And I'm gonna read some of these comments in here next. Some people don't like that the comments move by so quickly. There's 1,200 people on here. We're broadcasting on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. So if there's a comment that you really, really need me to see and it's gone past, you know, just send me an indication in Cash App or a little message in Cash App or something. So let me let me check this out. Okay. So Lashandra sends $25 and says for being a lovely goddess. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. And a hey, Ray sent thirteen dollars and said the movie title is a lesson before dying. Thank you, thank you, Ray. Thank you. So that was the name of the movie, and the movie was horrifying to me. It was horrifying. Keisha sends a dollar and says, "Without conditions, you can lose a part of oneself." Exactly. Without conditions, without setting any standard for how a person treats you, you do doggone right. You'll lose parts of yourself, but not necessarily because someone is taking it away, but because you are giving it up. And there's so many of us out there who are in this suffering Olympics to see how much and how far and how down we can suffer in these relationships so that we... How much can we suffer in these relationships so that we can get a person to feel sorry enough for us? So that they'll be like, oh, the error of my ways. Let me stop abusing you now. I see that you've been beat down enough. No, stand up for yourself. Stand up. Straighten out your back, lift, push out your chest. Stand up. And if you are not treated the way that you, as a person who loves yourself, would treat yourself, it's time for you to go someplace else. Let me let me get the next one. Krista sends ten dollars and says, "Agape allows allows one to be in denial, plus liar to lie." Exactly. Absolutely. 
this desire of trying to be a human in a relationship where you give your love without conditions is dangerous. If you want to have a distant agape love for people, that's fine. If you can say, you know what? I still love you from afar. That's fine. But to continue to be in a relationship with no boundaries, a relationship with no conditions, think about what that means. I will love you with no conditions, no matter what it is that you do, whether you don't call me, whether you beat me, whether you bring diseases home to me, whether you go and impregnate other women out there, I will still continue to give you the same type of love and access so that you're walking around with this heavy cross on your back, thorns on your head, blood draining into your eyes as you look up asking the Lord to forgive them. How about the forgiveness that you need to give yourself to know that you don't need to endure that, that you can forgive yourself for having endured that before and loving yourself enough to be like, you know what? I will not do that again. I will continue to move forward. Maurice sends $5 and says, love the topic you're speaking on this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Maurice. And he sends $5. I appreciate that. And we have Ray who sent another $13 and says, for denouncing folks using the Bible to accept abuse. Thank you. And he sends $13. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. Thank you. And let me, okay. Sankofa sends $9 and says, religion is gentrified culture. Thank you for the $9, Sankofa. You know, there are people who were saying that the original text of the Bible existed in Ethiopia long before the white man got to it. However, what is the language it was written in? How was it translated? Was that the, you know what I'm saying? It's like, if we don't know these things and we are listening to a text that was written by who, how many years ago, and how that does that still applies to our life today. But I'm not here to, to judge whether or not anybody participates in a particular religion or not. You know, everybody has a right to believe whatever religion they believe. However, maybe there's a way that you can speak with your pastor or Bible school person about some of the things that we talked about, about taking ownership for how you show up in the world. Like me, I am not religious. The way that I navigate through this world, when, when something amazing happens to me, I'm like, you know what? I attracted this into my life. I realized that I am not separate from God. I believe that we have one energy, not that God is somebody outside of me, but that I am the same energy of God's energy inside of me. And that if there is something that I'm going to know or reference, I can reference inside me. I can go into meditation. But realize how there's so many different teachers who teach you, oh, don't meditate. That's evil. But you have to then seek counsel outside of you from other, from outside parties to translate for you. Let me grab the next cash app. Anne sends a dollar and says, love all that you do, sis. And three shiny hearts. Thank you, Anne. Okay. And then I'll grab the rest after we finish talking. I want to hear, I want to hear how, how some of you feel about this, about what it is that we're talking about, right? Jummy is saying, I don't trust the Bible after seeing the evil white people do, but they scare, they they are scared of black people when they are the true, oh my goodness, the true, oh my goodness. Okay, LaShonda is saying, wow, the word of God is true. And just because you don't believe in hell does not mean it doesn't exist. It's many people in hell wishing they could get out, but they are in for eternity. Okay. However it is that you want to feel, my dear, I don't believe in hell. I don't believe in devils. I don't believe devil made anybody do it. I don't believe in repenting and seeking outside counsel. I don't believe any of that. And I think that I've demonstrated. Tell me what else I need to expound upon that I put on the list. 
because if there's anybody who's confused about anything that I've said, we are live right now. And by all means, look, there are 1,200 people on here. Go ahead and thumbs up the video. Um, say whatever it is that you need to say while we're on here. Look, I don't, I don't, I don't fault anybody for believing what it is that they were taught. I don't fault anybody for believing what it is that they were taught. You know, I. Uh, look, we all, we are entitled to our beliefs. You know what I mean? And I'm stunned that people feel okay with worshiping a jealous God, a vengeful God, and a God that supposedly gave you free will, but would torture you for all of humanity if you enacted that free will in a way that is different than what this entity um, feels that you you should have. And I don't think that it's lost on us that God is depicted as a person with a penis. I don't think it's lost on us that God is depicted as male. <clears throat> and Dion R sends $5 and says, for encouraging us to look within without judgment. Thank you for the $5, Dion. Let me send you a heart. And Latoya says, sends five dollars and says, even Jesus demanded respect. You know, um, unfortunately, there are going to be so many people who feel that I, I don't know that they shouldn't. Raven says, I just started my spiritual journey and the meditation, and it is working for me, and I love it. V says, is there any proof of God? Laura says, many people believe in hell. Leah says, we are already in hell. I mean, there's so many different theories out there. I, I'm not, I, 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 I don't want to argue with a person about their belief. I just want you to just kind of peel back the layers of your own belief system and see what lies behind there in your belief in giving credit to another entity for the good things and giving you know, blame to a different entity for the bad things. What would happen if you said, you know what? I chose to incarnate in this life. I chose to have a certain set of difficulties enter into this life so that I could navigate around those for the enrichment of my soul on this soul's journey. What would happen if you said, you know what, on some deeper level, there is an internal knowing, an internal intelligence inside of me that, that knows that these everything that's shown up in my life is a part of the choice for this incarnation without judgment. The abuse that you may have suffered as a child, the trafficking you may have suffered as a child, the narcissistic parents you may have suffered as a child, the dis-ease you may have suffered as a child, that maybe there was some lesson in that for you, some lesson in the development of your soul in navigating around that. What if when you made a choice that you made that choice because it was a choice that you chose rather than something that a devil or something from hell made you do, or made your partner do. I mean, I'm gonna read these cash apps real quick. James sends $5 and says, the Bible is a colonial tool, period. Wake up, people. Thank you, James, for the $5. Shakira sends $1.37 and says, over 4,600 religions on the planet, zero are for me. And she sends a kiss. Listen, I feel you, my dear. I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> Ray sends $13 and says, I can't be with a lady who lacks self-love. Preach with a with a kiss emoji. Thank you. He sends $13. Thank you. And Pink Butterfly sends $5 and says, Bible plagiarized ancient Egypt text. Oh, interesting. You know what? I did hear that. I did hear that the um that the Ten Commandments came from the 40 principles of Mott. I did I learned that in, in college when we went through the religions of the world. So and my and my first boyfriend, he was in seminary school in college as well. So 
Okay, I have to let that refresh for the other ones to come in. And then I will grab some of your comments. And I will, um, I after this video, oh, it's going by so quickly. Somebody put up a thing that said, God wants me to be happy. And it went by so quickly that I didn't get a chance to see who it was from. So somebody said the 42 laws of Mott. That, that, I thought it was the 40 principles, but it's the 42. Okay, look, I, I don't know. I don't know. I've learned this so many years ago in college. So maybe that could be it. Maybe that could be it. And then, oh, they're going so quickly. I can't, I can't get them all. Man made God, man wrote the Bible. Kemet didn't have religion. Somebody else said, set yourself free. Somebody said, turn on slow mode. I'm inside of a program. So I, little Nas X's music video after the, what are we talking about over here? You all are having a different conversation. Raf. <laughs> And Juliana says it was from me. Thank you, Tanya. And it's it's going by so quickly. I can't even, I'm trying to click off of them, but my mouse is having a mind of its own. So I appreciate all of you for coming out. If there's anybody who has any other questions and you know what, listen, I mean, no disrespect to anybody's beliefs. I think that it's important to have, to have intellectual discourse and dialogue and not just, you know, and not just, just believing blindly. There are a lot of people who come to me who say, you know, I tried speaking to my my Bible school pastor or whatnot, and they told me to just have faith and not ask questions. And I'm like, if the questions of something that people are using to govern their lives, if you can't ask questions about something that you're using to govern your life, then, then what do you really have? You know what I mean? Let me read some of these. Raven sends $5 and says, love this topic. Please give Ray a chance. <laughs> Thank you, Raven. And she laughs and says, love 13. Okay, I got you, my dear. I got you. Well, you know, I'm going to be doing a, a matchmaking show starting next month. So, you know, the people will be able to submit. There's going to be a form you can submit. So we'll see. Sepero says, people confuse religion and use it to take abuse. Hashtag sad. Yeah. That's the thing. People do, instead of realizing that their life means something and is worth something. You know, Percy sends $5 and said, even Jesus meditated in the garden early in the morning. So why is it that people don't, why is it that people say that meditation is evil and that you shouldn't do it and stuff? And Darian says, sends $20 and says, thank you for shining a light on what I witnessed. So thank you. And there's a happy face, a blue heart, red heart, and black heart. I don't know if those are from the country flag or something, but thank you for the $20, Darian. I appreciate that. And thank you all for being a part of the conversation. We are going to come back in next. And in the next video, we are going to be reacting to the video of the guy analyzing the body language for Derek and his wife when they were in that in that video where he was coming out talking about his cheating, his serial cheating, and his and his wife coming out and, and saying that she supports him, et cetera. So we're going, so make sure that your notifications are on. If this is your first time on my channel, make sure that you subscribe and that you know how to find my channel again. If there's anybody out there who needs to forgive yourself or other people, on my website, I have a hypno, a hypnosis MP3. I am a certified clinical hypnotherapist and I have a hypnosis MP3, a guided meditative journey where you go in, read the reviews on it. You go in and you're able to release some of the, the things that you haven't forgiven before. So the link to my website is below. It's tanyatko.com. Go into the shop area and just look at the MP3s that are there. I'm in, I just got my board and my markers and everything. So I'm going to be doing some lessons coming up soon. 
And so I want you all to just stay tuned for that because I'm going to be doing lessons on setting boundaries, lessons on the beautiful freedom of not giving an F. I'm going to do lessons on manifesting money in your life and things like that. So that's where we're going next because I want you all to empower yourself with the tools to be able to live the types of lives that you deserve to live right now, today, and not tomorrow and some other day and enduring all types of abuse and all of that. Yaisha sends $10. She didn't leave a note with it. So thank you, Yaisha. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. All right. So listen, let me jump out of here now and I will see you all in the next video, um, which is going to be coming up right after this. Let me just um, reset my room and then come back in and we're going to talk about that piece by piece. We're going to be reacting to that video live. So thank you all for coming out. Oh, one more before we go. So let me take a look at this. Oh, Ray sends another $13 and says, simply showing gratitude for what you do. Three roses. And that's $13. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you all for coming out and spending this time with me this evening and keeping an open mind on this topic. If you're watching this video after we're live, I'd love to hear more of your thoughts about what it is that we talked about today. So I'll see you in the next video. I'll see if there's any comments before I leave. And then Raf is saying, oh, and then again, for you, those indigenous people know nothing of him. So that means they're going to hell. Mm. So I guess people are talking about Oh my goodness, we got Mott on the Mott. So I guess she would know about the 42 principles, right? And Caprine is saying, go Ray. Danny is saying, so disappointed. Oh, Loretta saying, Jesus is coming soon. Danny, what do you feel is disappointing? What did we talk about that was disappointing? I thought that we were, I thought we were very nice in this video. I thought we were. And somebody said, wait, somebody said there is no God. Leisha, it's going so quickly, I can't grab it. Leisha says, Christ died for our sins. Jesus is come in the flesh. You know, who taught you that Christ died for your sins? You know, Christianity was a cult before it got picked up as a religion. And Jesus himself was against religions. And the last thing he wanted was to be made into a religion. You know, so it's like the mere act of Christianity is going against Christ's wishes himself. It's like we really have to open up the dialogue to question some of our beliefs. And this, you know, with this conversation, the seed has been planted. And that's all I can say about that. The seed is planted and what you do with it is really up to you. You know, I sat down myself and read when I graduated from college. No, I was still in college. I read the Bible. After I graduated from high school, when I was in college, I, re I started reading the Bible at Genesis in the beginning. In the beginning, that's where I started. And I got to the story of Job, where God and the devil had made a wager on Job. And there's just a lot of inconsistencies in the Bible. And when I got to the story of Job and how this man suffered because of a bet that God and and the devil had, I just, I, I was no longer Christian after reading that story. It, I, I, after diving into it, it just, it just didn't, it didn't pass the smell test. If you're all knowing, then why do you need to make a petty wager with the devil? It's like, who is the devil to wager with you about a human being's life and suffering? And, they, and I dated a guy who was like, who was religious. And he was like, wow, the story of Job is one that he found so inspirational. And he was just going on and on about how Job never buckled and Job got all of these riches and Job got all of this stuff after the fact. And I was like, the mere fact that God would participate in some petty wager with a being that is beneath him, who is not omnipotent and all knowing, quote unquote, all knowing like him. Why, why wager, you know, wagering, it just, it means that you think that there's a chance that you could be wrong. If you know that there's no chance that you, you are wrong, why wager with an inferior being about the life of a man and, and have this human being endure suffering? This is what I'm saying. There's so much teaching of the enduring of suffering. And for what? 
So you could be sitting there and be like, oh, maybe God and the devil are wagering. Let me just go through this. No. 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 And you all, I mean, look, we're going to be split and that's fine. That's fine. I'm not here to try to convince anybody to do or be anything. I know what's right for me. You have to know what's right for you. Um, Desiree sends $2 and says, my, my mill was, okay, my mother-in-law was super religious, died from CNC, oh, cancer. Hub, stop being, oh, he cut it off. It cut it off. Hub, stop being what? Does it right? It's cut off. Now I'll never know the end of this story. Ah! Hub, stop being what? Hub, stop being what? I need to know how the story ends. Oh, my goodness. All right. Desiree, send me the rest of that. Somehow. You can email me, too. All right. So, listen. I um. Oh, look. Tyree says... I saw the most judgmental people when I went to church as a kid. Then there's that. Then there's that. And Connie says, but God says his thoughts are not our thoughts and his ways, his ways are not his ways. Why does, why didn't somebody do this? When you go, when you go to church or to your pastor or whatever, transfer the gender of God and, and start referring to God as her and see whether or not they stand for that. Hmm. See whether or not they stand for it in the same way that many people can't stand to see an image of Jesus who is not white. See if they stand for it and say, our mother who are in heaven. See whether or not they stand for, for you switching the gender because God doesn't have genitals, so how is he male? How is it male? How? He doesn't have, it, God doesn't have genitals, so how is it male? That's what I want to know. It doesn't have XY chromosomes. So how is it male? Chromosomes are a very human thing. So how is, how is God male? I want to know. How is God male? I want to know. How is it that God is male? If somebody can answer this before we get out of here, I will be very appreciative. How is it? If, if God has no chromosomes, how is it determined that God is male? If God has no belly button, right? So it's like human, it seems like humans have created created God in our likeness with nipples and a belly button and gender and stuff like that. Connie says, my higher power is non-binary. And then Cartier says, real question. I'm, I'm trying to catch them, but my mouse is going crazy. And it's going by so quickly. Hold on. What did they say? Stop trying to figure out God. He, she is not man. Holy Ghost is the difference maker. Amen. Why, sh why should people follow a set of beliefs that is demanded that they do not pontificate on, that they do not that they do not ask questions and expound their knowledge and information of? I mean, go right on ahead then. Go right on ahead. All right, let me grab this last cash app before we go. Dorothy sends $5 and says, keep speaking the truth. Thank you, Dorothy. Thank you. All right, and on that note, we are going to jump out of here. I will see you all in the next video. Tanya TKO, and I'm out. Go out there and love one another, but most importantly, what? That's right. Love yourself. Love yourself. And part of loving yourself is asking questions, asking questions to other people, asking questions of yourself, asking questions of your teachers, asking questions of the people who are teaching you and guiding you in religion. Ask questions. Dive deep. Live your life for in a way that is meaningful and full right now instead of in some other time. Take ownership of your actions, both good and the ones that are not so good. And furthermore, just above all, ask questions. And I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.